The elected officials will now process into the auditorium. So, music please. I would like to invite Alderman William White to call the meeting to order. I would like to call this meeting to order. As the first item of business before us now, I would like to invite the Somerville Police Honor Guard and the Somerville Fire Honor Guard to post the colors in this auditorium. Color Guard could please come forward, and if everyone could please rise in respect. I would now ask Alderman Connolly, Gewurz, Houston, and Sullivan to escort the mayor into the assembly.
now turn the proceedings back over to our guest host, Pauline. Thank you, Bill. Uh, would everybody please stay standing and we will now salute the flag. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, everybody. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, everybody, please stay standing because now we will hear from Somerville High School senior Francesca Zimmerman, who will sing the national anthem. Francesca. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs Okay, thank you, Francesca. Um, next, I would like to invite Reverend Justin Hildebrand of Connection Somerville to the podium to offer the invocation. Thank you. Let us pray. God of our many understandings, God of love and light, God of our universe, we humbly ask you your blessing on Somerville. We pray for peace and safety for understanding and compassion. We pray for all the many people of Somerville. We give thanks for the beauty of our diversity, for people of different races and ethnicities, languages and faith traditions, for people varied in sexual orientation and gender identity, for people with varied gifts and abilities. In the midst of all that diversity, we give you thanks for the gift of community that enriches Somerville from square to square and neighborhood to neighborhood. We pray for our elected leaders gathered here this evening. We pray for boldness with compassion and care. We pray for open ears and open hearts. We pray for peace and clarity in the midst of demands and pressures. As we trust them with the leadership of our city, we ask that they be granted the gift of wisdom and discernment. When challenges come that seem insurmountable, surprise them with what can be accomplished when we all work together. Give them hearts for all the people of Somerville, but especially for those who are in need, that no portion of Somerville might go unseen, unheard, or forgotten. Bless our cities, our city and its leaders, O oh God. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Hildebrand. Um, before I begin my own remarks, I would like to um, 
introduce some of the honored guests who are on stage tonight who may not be listed in the program. Um, we have Mayor Eugene Brune. Oh yeah, sit down. <laughs> sit down, sit down. Take, take a load off. Um, we have Mayor Eugene Brune. <laughs> Mayor Dorothy Kelly Gay. <laughs> Representative Timothy Toomey. <laughs> and Senator Pat Jalen. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Pauline Lim, and I am an artist and musician who lives and works at the Brick Bottom Artist Building. I've been a resident of Somerville since 1988 and of Brick Bottom since 1989. I'm the director of Brick Bottom Open Studios, which has happened every November for the past 26 years. I was really surprised and honored to be invited to MC this ceremony. It was frankly surreal. Um, they said I represented a bit of the spirit of Somerville, but honestly, I am a total goofball, all right? I'm mentally unstable wacko. And I pictured myself going to you all, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 75th annual Hunger Games. <laughs> I just couldn't resist doing that. So I started thinking, wow, maybe if Mayor Joe keeps getting reelected, the inaugural MCs he invites in the future will be more and more bizarre. This is probably part of Mayor Joe's epic conceptual art piece that's been years in the making. After all, this is his sixth inauguration, which is unprecedented in the city's history. So, <laughs> so I'm picturing next year's MC will be a guy with an Old Testament beard who stands up here and reads Neil Young lyrics out loud. <laughs> So clearly, I'm not big on solemnity, and this is a solemn occasion, but I figured since they asked me, I'll at least just try to forego swear words as much as I love them. <laughs> as an artist, I pledge myself to tell the truth, and that's usually the opposite of politics, sadly. However, I'm here tonight because I truly am proud to proclaim my love for this wonderful city. It has been amazing. <laughs> It has been amazing to see the transformation of my own community, Brick Bottom, from an industrial wasteland into a vibrant oasis. When Mayor Joe came to the Brick Bottom artist community to ask us to come up with ideas for the waste transfer station site, he said, be weird. The weirder, the better. Could he have given better advice to a bunch of weirdos? <laughs> we feel loved by the mayor and by our Alderman Marion Hinkley. And so we love them both. They watch our backs, so we watch theirs. Similar success has been happening just down the street in Union Square, thanks to the efforts of Union Square Main Street, the Somerville Arts Council, Arts Union, and others. I remember when a few years ago, Rachel Strutt of the Arts Council told me that they were trying to focus their efforts on Union Square, and just look at it now. It is getting national press as the hottest place to open a new restaurant or the best place to throw a festival. It is exciting to be within walking distance. It's such a happening place, and we're all within walking distance of it. One of my favorite memories is of Mayor Joe cutting the ribbon at the opening of the Micro Museum in Union Square, a teeny tiny museum with miniature art that had miniature parking on the diagonal set up next to it. It is clear that this administration has a sense of humor and fun, which is essential to thinking creatively and freshly and these fresh ideas have brought immeasurable life and energy to this beloved city of ours. Aside from all this unabashed fun, Mayor Joe's administration has displayed the efficacy and perseverance necessary to accomplish serious changes, to protect and nurture the best our city has to offer, and to make our city an example to the nation and to the world of how civic leadership can create the happiest city imaginable. We are witnessing the heroic reversal of past development that didn't give two craps about the individual, especially those individuals who happen to be pedestrians or bicyclists. <laughs> Freeing us from our cars has lessened our isolation, and that is really raising the happiness quotient. Studies show that the unhappiest hours of people's daily lives are when they are trapped in their cars commuting to and from work. Sound familiar? 
So this commitment to the arts and to the individual human being is transforming a once ugly city, funky in the bad way, into a place that people are clamoring to live in and that the national press is watching, funky in the good way. So next on everybody's radar screen seems to be East Somerville, and it's already looking a thousand times better than it used to. I cannot wait to see what happens in the future. So I salute all of the incumbents for making this a city that so many of its residents truly love and call home. It is a place of belonging, and that is because it is tended with love and care neighborhood by neighborhood. I entreat all of you incoming decision makers to think like artists, enjoy creating this evolving city that you will have a huge part in shaping. Let us continue to be a city of makers. Thank you, everybody. I would now like to introduce the Board of Aldermen and ask that they remain standing when I've said their names so that they may be administered the oath of office. William A. White, Jr., <laughs> President. John M. Connolly, Vice President. Mary Jo Rossetti. Dennis M. Sullivan. Matthew McLaughlin. <laughs> Marianne M. Houston. <laughs> Robert J. McWaters. <laughs> Tony Lafuente. Mark Niedergang. <laughs> Rebecca Gewurz. <laughs> Tatiana Ballantyne. <laughs> so Judge Flynn, please approach the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. <coughs> I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and will support the Constitution thereof, so help me God. I State your name again. I do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me as alderman of the city of Somerville, of Somerville. according to the best of my abilities and understanding Agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Constitution and the laws of the Commonwealth. So help me God. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. Congratulations. Next, I will introduce 
the members of the school committee, and I ask that they also remain standing when I call their names to be administered the oath of office. Chairperson Christine Teberge Rafal. <laughs> Vice Chairperson Adam Sweeting. <laughs> Stephen Hua, or Roy, or Royce. <laughs> Dan Futrell. <laughs> Laura Pitone. <laughs> Paul Buckelman. <laughs> Carolyn Lynch Normand. Now, Judge Flynn, would you please administer the oath? Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name to solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and will support the Constitution thereof, so help me God. I state your name to solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me <coughs> as school committee member of the city of Somerville according to the best of my abilities and understanding agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Constitution and the laws of the Commonwealth. So help me God. I state your name to solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. Congratulations. And now I would like to introduce the choir from the Haitian Holy Bible Baptist Church for a musical selection.
Thank you. That was beautiful. Oh, I'm sorry.
guy. It's beautiful. That was a beautiful selection of tunes from the Haitian Holy Bible Baptist Church. Um, now I would like to introduce the chairperson of the school committee, Christine Rafal. Christine Rafal began serving as the school committee representative to Ward 4 in 2010. She began her education career in Somerville in 1989 and has since devoted her professional life in one way or another to positive youth development. She, <laughs> that's all right, I can handle it. She and her husband and their two daughters live on Heath Street. That's Heath Street. Okay, Christine. <laughs> Come on up. Thank you, Ms. Lim, for that kind introduction. And I want to thank the choir again for their beautiful uplift and strength they conveyed in the music. <laughs> thank you, Mayor Curtisoni and my fellow elected officials. I am honored to share this stage with you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for braving the weather to celebrate this exciting night and historic moment for our city government. We know we have unprecedented um, sixth term for a mayor, but how often have we, or have we ever been able to say that half of the school committee is new? We have four returning members and four members elected for the first time, and that adds up to seven. <laughs> Wait, no, it's true. <laughs> I'm grateful to continue working with Paul Bockelman, Adam Sweeting, and Steve Royce. And I look forward to welcoming and working with members who were elected for the first time, Carrie Norman, Laura Patone, Dan Futrell, and Steve Royce. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, Laura, and Dan each bring experience, thoughtfulness, and perspectives that will only enhance this school committee's focus on supporting and advancing Somerville students' achievements. Also unusual this year, both ex officio members are returning, which will provide even more continuity. Speaking of continuity, since I first became involved with the Somerville Public Schools nearly 25 years ago, I've recognized a lot of good things happening here. So we are, of course, building on what those before us had created. Three amazing leaders leave the school committee as of tonight, Mrs. Cardoso, will be sorely missed. But the inspiration of her care for students and staff during her amazing 22 years serving on the school committee will be remembered and emulated. Ms. Rossetti and Mr. Niedergang have moved over to the Board of Aldermen. While their advocacy and leadership will be missed on the school committee, I have full faith that they will continue to advocate for the needs of Somerville schools and school children from their new seats. Somerville is one city where the mayor, Board of Aldermen, and school committee all work together to support our faculty in making our schools dynamic centers of learning. The mayor's leadership, the board of aldermen's financial support, and the school committee's focus on the quality of students' learning experiences are most evident in this beautiful new auditorium in our fantastic East Somerville Community School. <laughs> After the fire in 2007, your elected leaders worked as one to make sure that our rebuilt school would be a state-of-the-art facility for learning. I encourage you to check it out. You will see what I mean. It is just stunning. And our thanks go to everyone who made this a reality. More importantly, the mayor, board of aldermen, and school committee all have a clear understanding that the quality of a city's schools is crucial to the quality of life in that community. Children who go to public schools with their neighbors develop a strong sense of being from here and of belonging here in Somerville. 
Whether your family has been here for generations or if you are new to the city, like me and my family, that's 25 years here is still considered new, <laughs> Somerville schools welcome you, embrace you, and work to help every child succeed. Before my girls, Marissa and Naomi, were even in school, and actually before Naomi was even born, I was volunteering at and welcomed into the Healing School. And now that they're in 10th and 11th grades, my husband Howie and I feel so fortunate that our girls have had the benefit of the richness of a Somerville education at the Healy and the high school. Our schools both reflect and create our community. And we all know how much appreciation we owe to the families, faculty, staff, volunteers, and a myriad of community organizations who give so much to our children. But I'd just like to tell you about a small moment I witnessed recently that can illustrate how easy it is to participate in this community, how it need not take any extra time out of your day to be supportive and hospitable toward the children growing up here. I sometimes hold morning office hours at Thurston Spa near the Winter Hill Community Innovation School. And around eight o'clock, a few children stop in to pick up a snack or a drink before school. One day, a little guy, I guessed him to be about nine years old, came in and picked up a bag of potato chips, and he held it in his hand. He seemed totally focused on an inner debate of whether he needed them or not. <laughs> so among the adults silently witnessing, the suspense became palpable. We could almost see the wheels turning in his head. Was he thinking about Shape Up Somerville? <laughs> It seemed to be a very hard decision. Maybe he was calculating whether he would have enough money for something he might want later if he bought these now. <laughs> Finally, the boy put the chips back and continued on his way to school. And Jerry, the owner, just smiled. He just smiled about the boy's decision. He clearly knew the boy from his daily visit, and he enjoyed watching him and all the kids grow up in the neighborhood. I don't know what, if anything, it will mean to the boy, but to me, I saw Jerry, a friendly, caring adult, observe a child with open-hearted curiosity and with respect for the child's own thought process. And I believe openness to who children are and respect for their thoughts is the most basic starting point, not only for valuing their membership in our community, but also for nurturing their eventual independence in a future we cannot fully imagine. So I am always very proud that Somerville, while posting remarkable improvement in measures of student growth for three years now, is still notably dedicated to educating the whole child. We aren't just about pumping up test scores. Across our district, we have growing programs of enviable quality um, in arts, music, sports, clubs, after school enrichment, and early childhood education. Many cities and towns have eliminated these programs or charge fees that make them inaccessible to many families. We don't. We know the importance of educating whole persons and recognize that no test score, no grade point average can communicate the promise of a young life. It is my goal for the coming years to keep in mind the balance between, on the one hand, using tried and true practices to focus on educating the whole student, and on the other hand, carefully, thoughtfully adopting bold innovations that will propel our district into the leading edge of educational attainment. Offering a variety of learning experiences recognizes that all of us have many more talents, interests, gifts, and intelligences than just those that can be easily measured. And a whole and happy community needs whole and happy youth. We look forward to working together to help our schools and students keep moving forward. Speaking for all my colleagues on the school committee, I want to thank our families for putting up with our many evening absences. And we thank you, the electorate, and our fellow community members in Somerville for your faith in us. I, for one, accept the charge with seriousness and joy. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. And now I would like to invite Alderman 
Bill White back up to the podium for his remarks. Um, Alderman White was born and raised in Somerville and graduated from Somerville High School. He went, yay! <laughs> he went on to graduate from Harvard College and Georgetown Law. He clerked for a federal judge and has been practicing law for over 30 years. He has his law office in Magoon Square and is beginning his 17th year as an alderman at large. Thank you, Pauline. Good evening, folks. Before we start, former Ward 3 Alderman Tom Taylor spoke with me. And, and unfortunately, he's back in the hospital with a recurrent infection. He really wanted to be here tonight, and his wife, C, and his daughter, Rachel, is here. And I ask that we all keep him in our thoughts, but let's give Tom a round of applause for his <laughs> continued battle. Before I begin my can speech, uh, it, it just struck me that, yes, the mayor is serving, and I, it, this is an unprecedented sixth inaugural, but I'm starting my 17th, 17th year, you're starting your 19th year. So I mean, at the end of his, this term for Joe, it'll be 20 years, and, and during our time, we certainly haven't agreed on, any, on everything, but <laughs> I, I, I honestly believe that we've really developed a mutual respect and that we're all working together to make this a better city and I really look forward to presiding over the board next year to working again with the mayor and you know to do even better things. So mayor congratulations. People of Somerville, I come here to announce to you that a newly constituted board of aldermen for the city of Somerville is ready, willing, able, and eminently qualified to perform the important tasks that it faces. We all look forward to working with the mayor to make Somerville an even better city. We have just witnessed an election that has brought five new aldermen to this board, an event that has not happened in many years. This infusion of new blood at one of the most critical times in this city's history has been described by some as a sign from divine providence. So I think that might be a bit of an overstatement. <laughs> But let me introduce to you these new members. We have Mary Jo Rossetti, Alderman at Large. <laughs> and Mark Niedergang, Alderman from Ward 5. <laughs> who both just finished their dedicated service to this city in the school committee. I've served in the school committee and I know these folks and in my opinion they both have a true sense of community and bring value and experience to this board. From Ward 1, we have Matt McLaughlin, our youngest member. <laughs> Matt was born and raised in Somerville and graduated from Somerville High in 2000, only 27 years after me, um, <laughs> and served two tours of duty in Iraq. He helped found the organization known as Save Our Somerville and just recently graduated from Tufts. <laughs> from Ward 3, we have Bob McWaters, who had served as clerk of committees for this board for 18 years. <laughs> In addition to this direct knowledge of the operations of the Board of Aldermen, Bob brings his professional experience as a probation officer for almost 30 years and his master's degree in public administration from Northeastern. Bob, too, is a proud father, as I can vouch, for I still recall his joy when he told me a few years back that his son had been accepted at Harvard College. <laughs> and from Ward 7, we have Katiana Ballantyne, a longtime resident of the Teal Square area. who currently serves as executive director of Girls Leap. Prior to running for office, Tatiana spent countless hours volunteering in educational and community organizations while raising a family with children in our school system. Tatiana also obtained an MBA from Suffolk. It's good to go to the Somerville schools. <laughs> Tatiana
Tatiana also obtained an MBA from Suffolk and brings valuable business and financial experience to the board. You know, you might ask if I just went a little overboard in stating that this board is facing one of the most critical periods in the city's history, and I'd have to tell you with a straight face that I am not. Folks should realize that at certain periods of a city's history, the decisions of its elected officials can influence the fundamental future of a city for decades to come. Let's think about it. Many folks today talk about transit-oriented development, which is locating dense development near transit stops. Well, beginning over 125 years ago, when local rail stops and streetcar lines came to our city, our city became ripe for real estate speculation and development. Back then, the decisions of our predecessors to open the city up to unregul de unregulated development with small lots and multifamily units and little green space result in our city becoming the most densely populated city in the U.S. by 1930. Our entire city was a transit-oriented development before the term even came into existence. <laughs> this dense city, of course, had its problems, such as overcrowding, little open space, and tenements located near factories. It also, however, provided opportunity for massive numbers of immigrants to find inexpensive housing close to jobs and transit lines and to raise a family. Our schools were teeming with children, and large numbers of families stayed many times for generations right here in our city. This created a strong sense of community, the development of Somerville pride. Of course, we can't look at the past with rose-colored glasses. We suffered tremendously as a result of suburbanization. As many folks fled our city, housing became substandard in some parts. Our squares deteriorated and businesses suffered. But we have to see the true renovation, rejuvenation that has happened since, say, the mid-90s. Our fortune has really changed to becoming one of the most desirable places in the Boston area. We see our real estate prices increasing and the construction of housing everywhere throughout the city. Especially with the green line, our city has become as ripe for speculation and development as it was 125 years ago. And just as then, the decisions that our city government makes in the near future could influence our city's development for the next generations. And to me, one of the most important questions is whether the sum of the future becomes a community in the true sense of the word, or merely a desirable place for folks to spend a few years and then move on. For there is a real distinction between a city and a community. If you think of a city as the physical layout of its structures and streets within a boundary, then some of it will continue on no matter what we do or don't do. But to think of some of it as a community requires a different perspective. A community is a place where people come together with mutual goodwill, respect, and tolerance. They share in a common lot with one another and help one another in an unselfish manner. And I can think of no better example of this than when folks shovel snow from their, for their neighbors, and especially the elderly, which is not at all unusual years ago, and it still takes place in, in some neighborhoods in our city, which still retain that sense of community. Communities are characterized by caring, fair play, honesty, courtesy, kindliness, consensus building, and working together towards common goals with a sense of common responsibility. This experience, though, is built on direct acquaintanceships and understanding that results from contact among its members. This type of community cannot be created in a city when, when too many of its, of its residents are transient, as they don't have any direct contact or develop acquaintanceships with their neighbors. You know, and, and, and we're seeing it. When folks don't care about their neighbors or their neighborhood, you end up in a city with, with limited involvement in civic and social organizations by its residents. And especially when folks live in absentee landlord properties, you see a lot of noise, trash, and rodent problems generated. And then this puts an increased burden on our city services to meet these problems. Now you may say, Bill, well, that, that sounds nice. You know, people have been complaining about the city changing for 20 years. Um, but how do you know what's happening in Somerville? Well, one way you can find out what's happening is from the last census. Now, folks, please don't roll your eyes. I'm not going to bore you with a thousand facts that I've gleaned from the census, but there are a couple of facts that are, are quite telling, I think. According to the last census of 2010, only 76% of Somerville residents 
had lived in their same residence over one year earlier. And I mean, I've checked that a couple of times. It's striking to me, but that means we almost had a turnover of 25% of our housing units in one year. That same census says that only 30% of some of the residents have lived in their housing unit for more than 10 years. Of course, some folks move from one house to another in Somerville, so I don't think that should be read to mean that only 30% of our residents have lived here for, for more than 10 years, but, but it does indicate tremendous turnover. The census also shows that from the year 2000 to 2010, our population of school-age children from 5 to 17 years of age dropped 30% from 8,000 to 5,600. I think you agree that these figures are showing that we are becoming a much more transient city and, and again, has been resulting in, in, in a loss of a sense of our community. Now, with this in mind, we have to recognize that massive real estate development can be highly seductive to a community. Large-scale building can increase the city's tax base to provide funds for additional spending. Also, you know, as an elected official who likes the camera, it's, it's hard to refuse attending a groundbreaking with photographs for a major development. But we have to remember, long after we've put the shovels and construction hats from the groundbreaking in our cellars, and the photographs will start to become yellow, those buildings and their consequences will live on, perhaps longer than us. That's why I'm saying that the decisions that we make regarding future development can either lead to our community becoming even more transient or it can help create a vibrant community. One of the most important ways I, I think we can do that is to convince families with children to stay here. Our schools are making tremendous strides and I've seen that by, by serving on the school committee. Um, and there is an increase in early year enrollment. But we need to create a housing stock with more two and three bedroom units to accommodate those families. Over the recent past, I've spoken to a number of mothers with children in the Somerville school system about this situation. Some are from long-term Somerville families, and others just moved here, but they all share a similar story. They and their husbands bought two-bedroom condominiums a few years ago, and they now have a son and daughter in the school system. They recognize that their children will need separate bedrooms in the near future, and are actively looking for three-bedroom units in Somerville because they want to stay here, but they're finding it difficult to locate reasonably affordable units in the city, and many of them fear that they're gonna have to move out of the city and, and take their kids out of the school system. I would probably guess that we may have hundreds of young families in a similar situation, and maybe that's one of the reasons, you know, to explain our drop in, in school age population by, by 30%. Now, examining our zoning and affordable housing policies to promote the creation of multi-bedroom housing and not single bedroom or micro units could go a long way in creating housing that would increase our population of long-term residents. I think another thing we have to look at is enacting policies that don't cause our current residents to move. Many folks consciously made the decision to move to Somerville instead of other communities because of our current density is balanced between neighborhoods and squares. We must be careful that we do not create additional housing especially with massive developments to house short-term residents that impact our existing residential neighborhoods and drive current residents away. For if they move, who will take their place? Will it be folks who want to stay here for the long term? Or will it even further increase transiency? Definite need for balance. The mayor and this board agree that we also have to promote good economic development in our city with uses such as office, research and development, and biotech. And the mayor should be commended for bringing partners to Somerville. <laughs> At the same time as we think about that, we have to make sure that our valuable land is not all taken up with residential development. Only through this good economic development will our residential homeowners obtain property tax relief? Needless to say, reducing or stabilizing property taxes is one direct way that we can help keep Somerville affordable for its residential homeowners and convince them to remain here and contribute to our city. While doing this, we also must carefully scrutinize funding requests, especially bonding, 
to ensure that our city's fiscal health remains strong. Don't get me wrong, of course, we all agree that development is necessary. We don't want empty land or abandoned buildings. We all want to replace outmoded uses such as junkyards and untreated hazardous waste sites. And we also have to realize that some will probably never again have the sense of community that it had decades ago. The nature of our society has changed. And we cannot, nor should we expect, everyone who moves to Selma will want to stay here forever or even for a year. Everyone has the full right to come here and stay here as long as they want. Our obligation is to provide a welcoming community with the tremendous advantages that flow from living here. And I think we should also recognize that as a city, we have spent substantial resources in planning and implementing policies that make our city so attractive for development. I believe that it is therefore right and just for our city to regulate that development so that the city of Somerville will grow as a true community. In preparing this talk, a memory came to me that well, I hadn't thought about in, in ages. As a young child back in 1960, whoop, I'm dating myself again, um, I was riding with my uncle and his elderly father who lived in Somerville, and we were going to the north end to shop. We drove through the government center area of Boston right after the old West End had been cleared by an urban renewal project. This plan demolished 3,000 units of housing and displaced 10,000 people. A large working class neighborhood in which Italian and Jewish immigrants had lived had just become a huge swath of empty land. When he saw it, my uncle's elderly father, who was an Italian immigrant, was visibly shaken. We spoke to my uncle in Italian. When they were through talking, I asked my uncle, you know, what, what happened? What was your, you know, your father talking about? And he tried to explain it to me, a, a five-year-old who couldn't quite understand the concept of urban renewal or eminent domain. <laughs> and then he said his, his elderly father just couldn't fathom the fact that an entire neighborhood had been basically demolished and wiped off the face of the earth. He told me his father kept asking him, who let this happen? Who let this happen? Now, don't worry, our city has no place. Whenever, you know, not, nothing like that is, is clearly in the cards. But the story sort of sends a message. And, and I think about it, probably none of us want to be responsible for creating a sterile city which people visit 20 years from now, shake their heads and ask, who let this happen? Certainly, I don't think we want our city to become even more transient with fewer children in our schools, neighbors who don't know one another, and residents with no social, civic, or political involvement. To the contrary, the time has come for all of us to work together to create a landmark city. The task to reinvigorate our sense of community falls squarely on us all. A Somerville that will be admired for managing its growth to revitalize a sense of community among its residents. A shining example for other cities. This board has a tremendous obligation to perform and I look forward to presiding over it during the next year. Thank you all. Thank you, Alderman Wright. I would like to now introduce Mayor Joseph Curditoni. Tonight is an historic night for Mayor Curditone. Curditone, Curditone. He is beginning his sixth term as mayor of the city of Somerville, making him the longest serving mayor in the city's history. Prior to his election as mayor in November 2003, Mayor Curditone served eight years as an alderman at large. In his 10 years as mayor, he has implemented many innovative programs and policies like Shape Up Somerville, 311, and Somerset, among many, many others which have led to Somerville's being named to a long list of prestigious organizations, awards, and recognitions across the country. He and his wife, Nancy, are, are parents to four young sons, Cosmo, Joseph, Patrick, and James, all of whom are here this evening. <laughs> so, Mayor, I invite you up to the podium. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Joseph A. Curtitone. I, 
Joseph A. Curtisoni. We solemnly swear. We solemnly swear. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And will support the Constitution thereof, so help me God. And will support the Constitution thereof, so help me God. I, Joseph A. Curtisoni. I, Joseph A. Curtisoni. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me. As mayor of the city of Somerville. As mayor of the city of Somerville. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of the Constitution and the laws of the Commonwealth. Of the Constitution and the laws of the Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I, Joseph A. Curtisoni. I, Joseph A. Curtisoni. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Flynn, my good friend. And I want to give Judge Flynn a, a great round of applause. <laughs> Justice of the Summerville District Court. Well, good evening and happy new year. Happy new year. Members of the state delegation, President White, Vice President Connolly, Chairperson Rafal, and Vice Chairperson Sweeting, honorable members of the Board of Aldermen and the School Committee, Superintendent Parentazzi, my good friend, former Mayor Bruin and Mayor Kelly Gay, honored guests, give them a round of applause, good people. <laughs> honored guests, friends, family, my fellow public servants, and my fellow residents of Somerville. I stand before you this evening in my sixth inaugural as mayor, humbled by the trust you have placed in me and grateful for the opportunity to continue our work of making this city a place of opportunity for everyone. As I uh, look back tonight at what we have accomplished together and what the future holds, I must thank my fellow elected officials who have contributed so much to the work of making Somerville a great place to live, work, play, and raise a family. Thank you very much. <laughs> to those newly elected to office in November, thank you for already displaying your commitment to the values of this community and for standing up to represent those values. I look forward to working with each and every one of you Thank you very much. And to those elected officials leaving office, Teresa, I'm looking at you, you, <laughs> and others, and I'm thinking of Tom and many more, I in this city owe you a debt of gratitude for your service. Thank you for your dedication <laughs> and for your contributions to our city. Thank you also to Pauline for serving as our MC tonight. Your artistry and creativity represent so much of what we and I love about Somerville, and if you get over that shyness, you're gonna be a hell of a person, let me tell you. <laughs> Someone once told me, the days are long, but the years are short. And it certainly seems that way over the past decade both as a father watching my family grow, but also as mayor and watching the city grow. When I stood before you 10 years ago, my son Cosmo was only an infant. Now Cosmo has three brothers, Joey, Patrick, and James, somewhat paying attention here tonight. <laughs> my, 
My sons, my wife Nancy, and my mother Maria, my extended family have given me so much support and understanding over this past decade. In fact, we just got back from a family trip to Lake Placid yesterday. So my wife, four kids, and I packed into a car with suitcases and supporting equipment for a five-hour drive to a kids' hockey tournament. And we faced, as you can imagine, lots of options. What to do, where to eat, what movies to watch, which led to some intense debate and serious negotiations. <laughs> and you know, now that I think of it, my vacation was a lot like my day job. We had fun, didn't we, boys? Didn't we, Mom? Yes, and you won, but I'm glad to be home because <laughs> I'm always glad to be back in our city. And as I reflect upon the past decade, I think back to why I wanted to run for mayor in the first place. I love this city. My parents, came from Italy and settled here seeking a better life for their family. They came to Somerville because they sought opportunity. They wanted to make their hopes and dreams a reality. In my neighborhood, it was filled with similar stories. Families from Ireland, Greece, and Portugal, we all came together to pursue our dreams. I remember, I remember this, I remember neighbors leaning over their fences to share their prized tomatoes or freshly grown basil. I remember walking down the street in my neighborhood and hearing different languages from all over the world. I remember carrying my hockey gear in a bag down the street with my friends and kids playing ball in the street while parents chatted on their porches. And somewhere, you could hear someone playing music. And I, I saw a city filled with hardworking, optimistic, proud, and creative people. I saw the potential in my family, my neighbors, and my friends. I took in our diversity, all the tastes and smells and sounds for neighborhood shops and squares, and I knew that here, here, we had something uniquely ours. I took pride in being from Somerville. I knew that by working together, the potential within all of us, my family, my friends, and my neighbors, could combine to create something bigger, better and brighter. You see, my story, it's your story. It's Somerville's story. And we have all written our own chapters of that story. But they're all part of the larger narrative that is Somerville. It's Alex Whitmore's story, inspired by his first bite of stone ground chocolate in Mexico. He came to Somerville and started his own chocolate factory Cars of chocolate, lauded in the gourmet world. It's Sylvia de la Soto's story. She immigrated here from Peru, built up her credit while living in Somerville's affordable housing, and used that credit to get a small business loan. And in the face of a tough economy, she decided to pursue her dream. Now, she's part of Somerville's thriving restaurant scene as the owner of Aguacá de Verde. It's Tom Bent's story. Born and raised here, when Tom graduated from Somerville High School, earned a vocational degree, and then set up shop in his hometown. Now, he's not only the successful owner of Bent Electrical, which offers great jobs in a union shop, he gives his time and passion here in the city and elsewhere. It's Guy Cavalcanti and Jen Martinez's story. Looking to pursue their passions of building robots and creating costumes, but lacking the space to pursue their dreams, Guy and Jen saw the vibrant, creative, and diverse community of Somerville as the perfect home for Artisans Asylum, a place where they and anybody could pursue their craft in an inspiring and supporting environment. These are just a few of the many individual success stories that together help form the narrative that is Somerville. These are stories of creativity, resourcefulness, and dogged persistence. I love being mayor because I see these stories play out every day. I get to tap into this wonderful marketplace of ideas and rely on the collective depth and wisdom of this great community. They say leadership can be a lonely experience. 
But my experience as mayor of this great city has taught me that I'm never alone. When I fought for the Green Line, Orange Line, or the Community Path Extension, I wasn't alone. I had Steph, Mystic View, the Friends of the Community Path, and scores of others beside me. When I advocated for the Trust Act, Sentinel Presente was on the State House steps with me. When I worked to help pass the Community Preservation Act, my partners were many. The Somerville Community Corporation, Historic Somerville, Groundwork Somerville, Invest in Somerville, and countless community leaders. I mean, I am never alone when it comes to providing a voice to the aspirations and ambitions of this community. I can always count on you. That is why I love this job. Today, our future is bright. Ten years ago, we faced a very different and uncertain future. We were in the midst of a perfect fiscal storm, a limping economy, shrinking state aid, and soaring fixed costs. In my first inaugural address, I asked for your help. I told you that we faced a fundamental choice, a choice that would shape our city's destiny for decades to come. I said we could hunker down, lower our sights, and just scrape by until times change for the better. Or we could build on the tradition of pride and progress that have shaped this city's recent history. And we could act decisively to ensure a more vital and prosperous community for our children and ourselves. Ten years later, you know what? We did it. You did it. In fact, we exceeded our expectations. We not only pulled together to face our challenges squarely, we didn't just commit to bold action. We have made some of a model city, a city that others look to because we lead the way. Leaders from across the state, the nation, and internationally, from nonprofit directors to mayors and even the first lady have turned to us for insight into addressing everything from childhood obesity to city management to how to measure resident happiness. I mean, we exceeded our expectations because you chose hope and progress. You chose to invest in our collective future, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, and in each other. We decided to control our own destiny, and we did. We worked together to forge another path, building an exceptional place to live, work, play, and raise a family. I mean, this is the orient and value for every decision taken, investment made, and policy created. It charges us to act today with an eye on tomorrow. And that is what we do every day. The community, this community, not only accepted the challenge, this community stood up to create an incredible legacy of accomplishments and prosperity that has launched us into the future. Just look at what we have accomplished together. Our residents are valued customers who deserve the best service. So we introduced one call to City Hall with 311. The first 311 call center in New England, named the best call center in the nation by Rutgers University. The Boston Globe. The Boston Globe has declared Somerville the best run city in Massachusetts. We have received the highest bond rating on our city's history based on our management practices and on our approach to economic development. Safe neighborhoods. Safe neighborhoods are the foundation of a thriving city. So we reform the Somerville Police Department into an effective and efficient model of community based policing with a diversified workforce and real results. Crime is down and down significantly. <laughs> for years, for years, some of us infrastructure was ignored and when we asked for help, the state shut the door. Promises were broken on the Green Line extension. The state told us that they would 
never, never build the orange line stop in Assembly Square. But you knock that door down with your passion, advocacy, and commitment to our values. You open the door to the Green Line extension. It's a reality today. The Green Line extension is under construction. <laughs> you open the door to Assembly Square Orange Line Station that will be fully operational this summer. <laughs> you fought to bring down McGrath Highway, and it's coming down. You demanded a city without the blight of a waste transfer station on the skyline. And you never let go of that vision for a mixed use, environmentally sensitive new neighborhood that would bring jobs, housing, and expanded access to the Mystic River. Because of you, that neighborhood is rising from the shores of the Mystic today at Assembly Square. The first doors will open this spring, and as you heard, we have our first anchor office tenant, Partners Healthcare. <laughs> Bringing 4,500 jobs to our community, that's on top of the first 300 jobs arriving this spring as our first tenants open, and that's just the beginning. You sent a message. We want our neighborhoods connected by more than cars. Our streets are not rush hour pipelines. You want a happy, healthy, productive community that is walkable, bikeable, transit oriented, and accessible. We're now a civil level bicycle friendly community in the seventh most walkable city in the United States. <laughs> We've dedicated ourselves to making this city accessible to all. And we are well on our way to becoming the most walkable, bikeable, transit-oriented community in the nation. And the community path extension is underway. And I, I am promise you tonight, it will go all the way to Boston. <laughs> you, you, value, you value our innovators and artists, the creativity that helps form our city's unique DNA. So we celebrate them and we invest in them. And as a result, our innovation and creative economy is thriving. 72 new businesses have been created in the past three years alone in Somerville. <laughs> you expect excellence in our schools. Our steady pursuit of that excellence is advancing how our students learn and they are reaping the benefits especially in the phenomenal improvement in student growth on the MCAS this past year, which puts some of them on par with some of the highest performing districts in the Commonwealth. <laughs> and this community doesn't just pay lip service to the need for affordable housing, open space, and historic preservation. You voted overwhelmingly to support the Community Preservation Act, to create more funds for these goals we value. That's right. And the awards and recognition for all that you have done and we have done together have rolled in from All America City, which is the Academy Award for Cities, to Healthy Living Innovation, to the 100 Best Communities for Young People. We earned them. You earned them. Finally, you wanted to be sure the community could shape its own future. So we worked together to create an unprecedented 20-year comprehensive plan, Summer Vision. Some of us first ever that simply says, this is who we are. And boldly states, this is what we will be in the next 20 years. And what is most apparent and important to all of us is this. Our most valuable commodity lies not in what we own or what we construct, but in each other. It lies in the creativity, diversity, and passion of our residents. Now that has always been here. But what has changed is that while individuals 
and families had their own dreams then. Today, we also have a shared set of hopes of our city. We know the power of what we can accomplish by joining together. We raised our expectations. We raised our sense of commitment and pride in Somerville. Somerville is the place where dreams take root, grow and blossom. Today, people talk about why they want to come here and about why they want to stay here. And it's still Somerville. It's still filled with the same creativity and diversity we had when I was growing up. Then neighbors shared their prized tomatoes or freshly grown basil. Hey, today we call that urban agriculture. <laughs> then you heard different languages from all over the world in my neighborhood. Today we use the terms and embrace the terms diversity and multiculturalism. Then kids played ball in the street. Parents chatted on their porches and people played music in their homes. Today we're weaving that same social fabric through summer streets and porch fest and in our squares and our playgrounds. Even with all our accomplishments and hard won progress, we are special today for the same reason we were special generations ago. Our people. Some of it doesn't belong to any one culture, age group, class, or ethnicity. And that's why we hold community discussions. That's why we engage everyone from longtime residents to our newest residents who immigrated here from countries around the world. I mean, we not only want to hear from you, but need to hear from all of you. We are all united here. We are united in aspiring for a better life for ourselves and our children. We are united in fighting for what we hold dear. We exchange our thoughts, ideas, and cultures, and we share our aspirations. That is what makes some of us special. That is our uniqueness, and that is our magic. That's what we hope to never lose, because that's how we have achieved so much over the past decade. That is the story of some of them. That's my story. That's your story. That's our story. But it is only the prologue. We face new challenges. Our aspirations have grown bolder. Our dreams are broader, and as the saying goes, the years are short, so let's never lose our sense of urgency. We know that when we work together on a common vision, that is the fuel that propels ordinary people toward extraordinary achievements. In the coming year, this is how we will continue to seize that momentum and what we will achieve together. We will protect those who have chosen Somerville and help shape Somerville. That starts with affordability. And affordability starts with housing. Every family that wants a home in Somerville should be able to afford a home in Somerville. <laughs> but to make this happen, we must be bold. We must be innovative. We will create a new affordable housing program for working middle class families. We will not leave the middle class behind. <laughs> we will continue to foster the collaborative environment that sparks innovation and the creative arts with more than words. We will create new fabrication and arts districts that will preserve artists and maker spaces and live work buildings. As our commercial tax base grows and new industries come to Somerville, we want Somerville jobs for Somerville residents. Once passed by the legislature, our job linkage proposal will enable a fee for development that will support job skills training and career development services. And we would do this, as we do this, with the local agency, which will be at our side, hired as a partner to make sure we promote first access to local jobs for some of our residents. And we will continue to invest in the people of this community. Write this down. We will increase our investment in education.
we will increase our investment in arts, culture, and recreation. We will increase our investment in public health. These are our values. We will also increase our engagement through a community budgeting process so that when I submit a proposal to the Board of Aldermen, it will be our budget, reflective of what we want to accomplish. But not everything we value is measured in dollars. Our environment, in fact, is priceless. Around the world, cities, cities are taking the lead in setting the standard on sustainability. As we have done in so many other areas, some of it will lead the way here too. So let's advocate together for the city's retirement system to divest from fossil fuels. <laughs> let's work together and make curbside composting a reality. Let's revive Alderman Gewurz's proposal to rid our community of plastic bags and pass it. <laughs> we, we have already made strides for our environment, and we will continue to make these strides. But we cannot tackle the challenge of climate change if we are not bold, and if we do not join together as a community to work toward a citywide goal. I'm calling on you tonight to make our citywide goal no less than to reduce our net carbon emissions to zero. Zero by 2050. <laughs> Let, let's make this our longest range investment in our people. I mean, it's an investment in our children and in their children. They deserve no less. And in the coming year, we will also uh, expand our openness and access to our openness and transparency. We will share more city data with the public. We will launch a new online dashboard where key data about Somerville can be easily accessed by every member of the community. To become more accountable, we will expand our city's ethics ordinance so that Somerville has the toughest ethics laws in Massachusetts. <laughs> Those laws will apply to every elected official, myself, the board, the school committee. We'll ensure accountability and equal access to city government. Everyone should have the same opportunity, not based on who they know, but on the merits. This is the momentum. When I was at it, out at Lake Placid, I saw a transcription on a plaque of Coach Herb Brooks' speech to the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team, and he told them this, great moments are born from great opportunities, and that's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. Some of them. These great opportunities are before us. You earned it. This is our moment. Ten years ago, we were a city with hopes and plans. Today, we are a community looking back proudly on our accomplishments. Tomorrow, we begin to seize the opportunities of the next 10 years. And I still see a city filled with hardworking, optimistic, and creative people. I still see the potential in every person I meet, the people who talk to me on the playgrounds and parks, who tell me about their own aspirations. We still have something uniquely ours. And you know, I consider myself a really lucky guy. I have a beautiful wife, a wonderful family that I look forward to seeing every day. <laughs> and a job that I look forward to every day because I know the strength, the creativity, and the resiliency of this community and what we are all capable of accomplishing together. That's the Somerville story. That's what makes Somerville unique. It's that magic, and I'm lucky to be part of it. And, 
And, and the work continues. As I did 10 years ago, I call upon each of you here tonight and everyone in our community to join together to ensure a vital, prosperous future for ourselves and our children. Thank you for the last incredibly meaningful, rewarding, and fun 10 years of my life, and thank you for the promise of an even brighter future for our city. I wish for all of us peace and progress in the upcoming year. Thank you very much. I don't say this lightly, but we are blessed, blessed as a city to have such a wonderful mayor, to have a wonderful board of aldermen, and to have a wonderful school committee. I invite you to take some of the hope that you've found here, some of the light, some of the sense of community and vision present here tonight. May we not simply tuck it away but may we instead share it with our neighbors and friends. May we be blessed as we work to make Somerville a city where all people can find welcome, opportunity, education, and a sense of community. Amen. I'd like to turn the proceedings over to Alderman White once more. What I would ask is the color guard please come forward to retire the colors and that everyone remain standing. I want to thank the Honor Guard for their services, and everyone is invited to the Holiday Inn for the reception afterward. I know Alderman Sullivan, you have the first round for everyone, but I now declare this meeting formally adjourned. Thank you all.